Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to make an intaglio print. In the previous sessions, you created a drawing, you created your intaglio print plate, and in this lesson, we'll learn how to finish by creating our set of five intaglio prints. Notice, for starters, how these images are backwards. It's a reverse image because it is an intaglio print, and my paper is nicely labeled. Uh, you will need, before you get started with your printing, you will need your five labeled prints. You should have your title on the left side, your name on the right side, and in the center you should have your edition number clearly written on each page. And in this video I will use the page or the print number one to make my intaglio print. Now, just before we get started, let's take a quick look at the difference between prints, okay? This print, I would say, is a very nice, high-quality print. This print I created, I used way too much ink, or the lines were not deep enough in my intaglio print to show up clearly. So, uh, remember we talked about making your lines deep enough, making your textures deep enough. If you don't make your lines deep enough, this is what your print will end up looking like. All right. If you don't use enough ink on your print plate, your print will end up looking something like this. It will look very shadowy and a little foggy because there's not enough ink to bring out those clear details. This print is okay. It's not as good as this one because there's still little foggy areas here and there, um, but it's acceptable. This print here is a very high quality print. This is what your goal is, to create a print that's this high quality. Now, as you can see, not every print will be perfect. We'd like to have at least one that is very nice, almost perfect. The other ones, if they don't turn out perfectly, that's part of the process that printing is. Okay, so getting started, you'll have your print plate. You'll need your piece of paper, um, and you'll need the other following supplies. You will need a brayer. This is referred to as a brayer. It rolls like this, and it should be a squishy, or if it's harder rubber for a different process, it might be harder. You'll need some block printing ink. Um, depending on how you use it in class, I will put it on your brayers or on your uh, inking tray for you. And you'll see that it's uh, thick and gooey. It's almost the texture of honey. And one of the reasons why this project is so dirty is you very easily get this on your fingers, and then it starts getting all over the place because it's on your fingers. Next, you'll need an inking tray. It looks like this. It has this L shape on it so that when you set it on the edge of your table, and I'm just going to slide my table forward, you can see how it uh, catches on the table so as you're rolling your brayer the inking tray doesn't slide away from you. Okay, Now, as you start, I will put some ink on your inking tray for you. I'll try to put the right amount. Sometimes I put a little bit too much, sometimes I put not enough, and so we'll try to adjust to get the perfect amount on your tray so you can make the most successful print possible. Please try to keep the ink on the tray so that you can uh, not so you're not getting it all over. You're also going to need a piece of junk scrap paper. This is a piece of just junk paper that I have that I use for doing um, permanent marker exercises and such. And this should be underneath you while you ink your plate. So you'll go to the inking station, wherever that may be, in the room, and you'll use your brayer. The brayer should always be set with the roller up so that it doesn't get damaged or leave ink all over the tray. Now, as you start this process, make sure that you're always rolling the ink one direction. So if I take this and I pull towards me, I'm always going to pull towards me. Or if I push away from me, I'm always going to push away from me. I'm going to lift the brayer up and push it away from me. Now, if we have one line of ink, you can see how the ink is not being evenly distributed on the sides here. So at some point, you're going to need to roll sideways. And if I roll sideways here and roll sideways here, you want to imagine you're going to have a little rectangle of ink about right here in the middle. Please leave a border on the side so you're not getting ink all over the table. Okay? Now, I'm going to just speed myself up. I am lifting up and starting over, lifting up, starting over. And I'm just going to speed up my motions here so that we don't take too much time. And you'll hear at some point a little crackling of the paint. 
and the paint will kind of, or the ink will kind of um, uh, stick to the brayer. And I'll be quiet for a second so you can hear it. You can hear that little crackling. That's what you want. And if you look closely at the brayer, you can see the little stripes of ink. That's what you want. Now, once you're done with the inking tray, you're going to move over to the place where you have the inking station, which will be right next to it. You'll move yourself over and put your print plate in the middle of your inking station. Then you're going to do the same procedure as moving your brayer always in one direction. So I'm always going to be pulling, or rather, rolling it away from me here. And I'm going to try to evenly distribute this ink. Now I'm going to start here and roll this direction. And roll from one side all the way off your print plate. Now, one way that you can kind of try to keep an eye on this is making sure that you have enough is if you can see white through like right here there's not enough ink it should be darker like this but you want to make sure that you can see your lines clearly if you get too much ink the ink will go inside of those lines now I'm gonna pull this back over so I can just get a little bit more ink for the bottom part and then this is where the inking gets a little tricky because you don't want to get it on your fingers but you do have to get it on your plate but then you can't hold your plate on the other side. Um, so I'm just going to use my index finger and just gently hold it down as I get this last corner done. Now you always use, I always like to try to use the same finger to um, get my print plate, hold my, hold down my print plate, because as soon as you get a little bit of ink on your finger, then it's going to be everywhere. As soon as you turn around, you're going to have it on your, um, your art shirt you're gonna have it next to you on the table and you can already see that my inking station here I've got an ink here and I got a little ink on my palm so it's really good to have um, a paper towel to wipe off your hands as you work so that you don't start getting this all over the place now once you're done inking your plate I would say this inking looks pretty good I don't see any little ghosting white areas. There's not too much inside of the crevices. So I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to pretend now I'm going back to my seat. I'll leave my brayer or the brayer at the inking station and I'll leave the paper at the inking station and I'll come back to my table. I'll set this on my table spot and now you take your paper and make sure it's labeled clearly and you want the label on the front so you're going to flip it over and then try your best if if I hold this paper here, this is a 9x6 print plate and a 7x10 piece of paper. Try to make sure there's a border on each side and then a border at the top. And then, of course, your information is down here at the bottom. So I'm just going to try to line this up. And one of the most important parts about lining it up is once you set it down, do not lift it up again. Even if it's not perfect, don't lift it up again or you'll get a ghosted image and you'll have like two of the same print on the page and it just it looks horrible so then you would never pound on your print plate you would never push it down like this because you'll leave marks all over so you take the heel of your hand this is the heel of your hand hold the print paper down and use the heel of your hand to go around the perimeter of your print and just gently press it down then take the heel of your hand and just press all over. Uh, you want to press firmly yet gently. Don't press so hard that you're smushing the paper into the, into the lines of the Integulo print, but make sure that you're pressing firmly enough that all the different areas of the foam are actually contacting your paper. Okay. Once you do that and you feel like you've done that enough, then lift your paper up by the corner and gently peel it back. Hold your print plate down and lift the print away. And it should look something like this when you're finished. Now this is a very nice print. Um, I've gotten all the lines clearly marked. There's a little bit of area right here where the ink kind of sunk into the line. Um, there's maybe a little area here and here where the ink could have been better. But this I would say is a very high quality print. All right. Once you're done with your print, make sure that it goes directly in the drying rack in the room so that we don't have a million prints sitting around by the end of class. So this would go into the drying rack. 
then it's very important that your uh, print plate gets washed off, especially if we're using multiple colors. You should wash it between every different color. And then make sure that whenever it's time to clean up that all of the inking trays get properly cleaned so that they look like this on both sides. There's no ink left on it. And make sure that as we clean up, the brayers get cleaned. All of the ink should get cleaned off the tops of the brayers and around the edges of the wheels. All right, um, so for finishing our Intaglio print, you will finish one print at least and make it look nice and neat like this one. And you'll finish your others in our next session and maybe we'll use some different colors of ink and we'll do some other experimentation.